Welcome back to the third segment. So you'll be pleased to hear this is going to be a fairly short segment, quite a bit shorter than the other ones. So we're going to be covering the EMP and component forecasting, CRC forecasting functionality in AMT. So we really treat this as one set of solutions because it does cover the initial maintaining a component forecast. So this would be more your sales reps or account managers or PSSRs uh, maintaining that component forecast, particularly around your EMP customers. Then there's a central function around capacity planning. So that's taking the forecast that might be of 50 components in a period and working out what's in stock, uh, what's going to be rebuilt, where is it going to be rebuilt, what's a, how much do you need in the way of remand. So it's uh, converting that forecast to a strategy f to deliver against that forecast. And coming out of that strategy will be the forecast by rebuild center or CRC as to what are their rebuilds coming up. So the three elements are all tightly connected. So first of all, the component forecast. And we really see that AMT, we've tried to model it almost as the sales force for major components. So it is designed for the sales reps. Each component that is forecast for a piece of equipment is treated as a sales opportunity and the sales rep has a clear visibility of all of those opportunities. Now in, in the mark area we viewed those opportunities just in the component changeout form. It's the same functionalities, the same uh, base sort of scheduling of components, but the sales rep now has additional fields that they can put against those, things like has has the work been confirmed, Is it uh, has the deal been won, if you lost the work, what was the reason for losing it, a lot more of those sales, what's the sales status against those those opportunities. And then there's KPI reporting on the sales performance, i.e. in a period what percentage of the opportunities were actioned by the sales rep, what percentage did they win, what is uh, of the next three months, how much of the opportunity has been confirmed, how much has it been reviewed, etc. So, um, so it's really taking each one of those components and treating them as a sales opportunity and then tracking the action. So the purpose for the sales rep is to really be managing his sales opportunities. The output of that process is an updated component forecast. So the driver isn't actually the component forecast, it is really just an output of the process of the sales rep um, actioning each of their opportunities. So how does it all work? So the equipment, all the EMP equipment are registered in AMT and um, on a regular basis and that will really just depend on the equipment and its expected utilization but the usages first of all will be updated. Um, so maybe that's once a month or once a week the sales rep is logging into AMT and updating the actual usages. If you don't update the usages, AMT assumes that its base utilization is being performed. So the system doesn't fall over, it's just not quite as accurate as if you've put actual usages in. Um, we'll skip over the condition monitoring, but any updates that the sales rep gets because of the condition of the equipment, any condition monitoring alerts, that would al um, allow them to update the component forecast. Um, they can uh, change uh, will create a change out record so if you've if the sales rep met with the customer and the customer said no I actually changed that component out three months ago then the sales rep can update that within AMT they can update for um, any of those historical change outs and revise the forecasted change out so they are maintaining the component change out um, schedule and also working with the customer if the customer's got any specific requirements around the strategy. Maybe the customer is insistent on saying, I want to use CAT Reman. So that those bits of information about the strategy the sales rep can be putting into the into the change out form. Um, but really coming out of the whole process is 
a validated component forecast that the sales rep is signing off on and saying these are all the opportunities that we've reviewed in action, these are the ones that are confirmed by the customer and that then feeds through into more of that central role around the capacity management. So this is just an example of some of the some of the forms for the sales rep. So the same information around the component change out schedule that we were seeing earlier about components being listed and when they're next due and the same fields that can be updated. But now there's another bunch of fields that are visible for the sales rep. Again, around sales responsibility, has the customer been contacted? Um, who was contacted? Uh, what date they were contacted? Uh, what's, and most importantly, um, is what is the sales status? Has the sale been confirmed? Is it, uh, is it likely? Is it unlikely? Um, and because that's really driving driving a lot of the um, a lot of the process uh, this is the same form that we saw in the previous segment about um, the sales reps got a number of views that they can view that component change our schedule on one was that previous grid this is the standard long-term planning grid available for the mark guys and um, sales reps can also view it in this format you can see the Gantt chart can see the component change our schedule and then through the IC database, you can uh, you can write your own reports and analyses against um, the the sales process. So these are sort of lost sales analyses, uh, analyzing the pipeline for each um, by sales rep to say what is the equipment population that they've got, what is their total opportunity, what percentage are being confirmed, etc. So there's there's a number of KPI reports now these. These can all be written by Barlow World. We, we, we expose the data through a data cube and Barlow World can write whatever series of uh, reports and elect to publish those reports. I, they can be automatically run and sent out once a week or once a month. So the next phase is the capacity planning. So this is taking that forecast and saying what's the optimal strategy for delivering against that that forecast. So this is really an extension of that previous flow diagram where the the component forecast is coming in. Uh, there's initial review. Set the rebuild strategy is the first thing is saying, okay, what's our standard strategy for a 793 engine? Are we going to be rebuilding it? Are we using reman, etc.? And then once you've set the strategy, you really need to validate that you've got the capacity to deliver against that strategy. So at this point, we have the ability to import and load what's in inventory, i.e., what's in stock now, what's under repair, what's on order, when it's expected to arrive, and validate that against what the demand is. And this routine takes into account things like if you do have a engine change out due in two months time and if you're going to rebuild that if your turnaround cycle on the rebuild process is two months then at the end of that two months you'll be getting one coming back into your inventory so that's what the calculation is looking at so it takes into account all the turn times and lead times to rebuild etc and it plots out your expected inventory levels and then coming out of that it sort of highlights where you've got shortages and or excesses of inventory and also what the expected uh, capacity is for the rebuild center because that's the other side is not just what you've got in stock but can the rebuild center handle uh, that capacity of components and then through that process you would um, you know you go through maybe a couple of iterations of um, looking at the impact of placing additional components on order, maybe additional reman items to top up capacity, and or you're going to adjust the component change out schedule. Maybe you meet with the uh, with the sales rep and say, you know, this component looks fine. If we can push it out by another two months, that's really going to help us out on smoothing our workload. So um, you go through a couple of sort of, of these loops until eventually you come up with a 
a rebuild and a, a inventory plan that is going to meet that um, the forecasted demand, and that then gets gets communicated. So some of the fields in AMT that we've added for this, uh, things like um, the next location for the rebuild. So if it isn't a component that's going to be rebuilt, you nominate the CRC. You nominate the part number. Maybe it's a different part number coming out that's going to be put in. Maybe there's been an upgraded part. And you nominate, is, is it going to be parts exchange? Is it going to be reman? And these are the three main fields that uh, that, that drive, um, drive that, that inventory um, forecasting logic. So I mentioned AMT does take into account items that are going to be rebuilt so that they come back into inventory. And that's really the big difference with a rotable component as opposed to normal parts where it's just simply a demand and once it's used, it's used. The thing with an exchange item, once it's used, it's used, but there's a core coming back that gets rebuilt and comes back into back into inventory. and. Um, this example, without going through too much detail on it, is, well, actually I will go through it. This is what, what AMT is doing. It's, it's, you load what is in inventory. So in this case, we've got two in inventory. Um, we've got a demand for one exchange item in week one. So the net inventory at the end of um, the week is, is one. Then we've got a demand for two items two exchange and one reman. So at this point, if nothing else, we'd be saying you're too short. Now, the one that got changed out as parts exchange in this week, if we assume that there's a two-week turnaround time, which is pretty efficient, but let's just assume that, then in two weeks' time, this one comes back in. So that one is related to this one being re returned into inventory, and this two is related to that two and that two to that two. Um, if you've got two on order that are arriving in week three, then we can see that. And, and so going through this calculation, you then plot what is your expected inventory balance at the end of each week. And then what we're doing is we're highlighting areas where you've got shortages. And then we have exception reports to be able to identify um, you know, you can't go through line by line every part number. You might just want to say, show me any item where we drop below our minimum uh, stated inventory levels. So the process is really taking that demand from that component forecast, taking what's in inventory and mapping the two against each other and coming up with a report that looks like this. So this is really the end result of what we saw on the previous slide. And the other field that we put in here for analytics is things like what is the total demand for the period, what's the average stock level. These are things that you want to sort of filter against. You know, show me any part number that we've got that has got no demand in the next six months. Um, show us anything where we have a annualized stock term below one or something like that. Um, so it, um, again, a lot of exception-based reporting to handle higher. Uh, numbers of sort of part numbers in the system. Then from the rebuild center capacity planning, what we do is we, we hold against each part number the duration of the rebuild process, of the actual time that it's in the workshop. Not that we hold the total turn time, which might be uh, two months, but of that it might be in the rebuild center in the CRC being rebuilt for maybe three weeks. So we hold that three weeks as a field as well. And then we, we, we aggregate the number of units that are being rebuilt at any point in time. So again, we're trying to get a workload. So instead of just saying, we're going to send four engines this week to the rebuild center and three the next week, um, if the rebuild center has got a capacity to have 10 engines in it at any point in time, then that's what we want to measure is how many engines will be in the rebuild center at any point in time. Um, and so that's what this report is doing, is it's, is it's measuring the number of components that are scheduled to be under repair at any point in time in the rebuild center to then validate that against the capacity for the rebuild center. 
Okay, thank you very much. That concludes the third and of the uh, of the segments, and um, yeah, I think now it's open to uh, open to questions, which you can fire away at your presenter. Okay, thank you.